I'm Carlos from Cacao Hunters. In Colombia, and I suppose in many places around the world, smallholder farmers are very vulnerable to the effects of climate change. If they cannot adjust to this new reality, the chances for them to significantly lose their income is high, as is the risk for them to go into the production of illicit crops like coca, the source of cocaine. We can prevent this from happening by supporting smallholder farmers who usually are the weakest link in the food supply chain to adapt. I started my career in coffee, but then realized that Colombia had an untapped, incredible natural gift with the potential to bring progress to communities that for a long time had been affected by our internal conflict. That gift was cacao, the ingredient for chocolate. With the examples set by neighboring countries like Ecuador and Venezuela that have produced great cacao for many years, there was a very good chance that we were going to find a lot of potential in the neighboring regions in Colombia. And that was the case for Tumaco in the south and Sierra Nevada in the north. Cacao has been growing in those regions for thousands of years, but unlike coffee, all the production was supplying a low quality and low price domestic market, instead of being the source of a specialty premium cacaos for crab chocolate makers around the world. What was missing? The perseverance necessary to transform a market dominated by big players. So we took the challenge. My first encounter with cacao growers was with the Arhuacos, an indigenous community in the Sierra Nevada mountain range on the Caribbean, a beautiful place home to a native cacao that grows wild in the tropical forest. The Arhuacos very generously opened the doors of their sacred land to us so we could work with them to preserve and promote this very valuable crop. From the Alhuacos, we've learned a lot. And probably one of the most important lessons has been the importance of living in harmony with our nature. For them, cacao is a productive forest, a small part of a complex ecosystem that can easily lose its balance, as we're all very well aware of. As an example of the consequences this imbalance can create in the Cauca region alone, where we have the chocolate factory, 4,403 coffee growing families have their farms at altitudes where coffee is no longer viable because of the effects of climate change. There is a real risk that these families will lose their sole source of income or switch to illicit crops such as coca. We've seen a reduction in the income that exceeds 50%. Higher temperatures make the coffee trees more vulnerable to pests and disease, all of which have a direct impact on the cost of production and on productivity. Thankfully, that same land is now suitable to grow cacao. And we can now offer an alternative to small coffee farmers in these regions so they can adapt to climate change by growing cacao. In an alliance with the Colombian Coffee Growers Federation, in the local government, we're switching 1,000 of those hectares planted in coffee to cacao. This will become a great example of not only the steps that we have to take to mitigate the effects of climate change in the most vulnerable ones, but also an example of how we need to work in a coordinated manner to make it happen. This effort will require the cooperation of the chocolate industry too, so we can keep our promise of a stable and high price to the cacao growers for a high quality product. We need to create an alliance for climate change. And one more thing, cacao is not only helping the smallholder farmers adapt to climate change, but it serves as a mitigant to climate change as well. We're seeking to deploy and grow cacao in a way that avoids deforestation and emissions. The planting of cacao on degraded lands has such a benefit. Sustainable intensification on existing cacao plantations could also avoid deforestation, forest degradation, and their associated emissions. Our job is far from finished. Colombia is a big country. Cacao has the ability to help farmers adapt to the harsh reality of climate change, a reality they have probably little responsibility for, but for which they're paying a very high price.